sight, and the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to, uh, preached to them. So, man, what a list of things that is going on here. The deaf are receiving their hearing, the blind receiving their sight, the lame are able to walk, the lepers are cleansed, the, the dead are raised, the poor have the gospel preached to them. He said, go and tell John what's going on over here. Now, Luke chapter 7, verses 12 through 14, it says this. Now, when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. Much people of the city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said unto her, Weep not. And he came and touched the buyer, and they that bare him stood still and said, Young man. And he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. So here we see Jesus having compassion on someone. We see from these verses, and if we look through the New Testament, we could see a lot more than this. But he went about doing good. He healed the sick. He gave the blind their sight, gave the deaf their hearing, raised the dead, restored families, forgave sinners, showed compassion. I mean, we don't see any marks against him, do we? This is, this is what everybody is looking for, right? Someone with that kind of compassion, someone with that kind of kindness, someone with that kind of power. I mean, my goodness, what a person Jesus Christ is. But now I want you to look in, uh, well, let me read one other verse. John 1, 10 through 11, he was in the world. And the world was made by him. The world knew him not. He came into his own and his own received him not. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your, uh, uh, for your love. Help us to understand your word now and apply it. In Jesus' name, amen. Look there in John 15. We're going to read about nine verses here, nine or ten verses. John chapter 15, verses 18 through 27. <clears throat> the Bible says this, If the world hates you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. Now stop just a minute before we go any further. We're talking about the one here who went about doing good, who gave the blind their sight, the deaf their hearing, cleansed the lepers, raised the dead, preached the gospel to the poor. He did all this great stuff, a, a friend of publicans and sinners, and yet the, he says here, it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own, but because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hateth me hateth my father also. <clears throat> if I had not done among them uh, the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. But this cometh to pass that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law, they hated me without a cause. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. And ye, shall, and ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. <clears throat> so in the New Testament, we see all these things that Jesus did good. And yet, he was hated. We read just a moment ago in John 1, where it says he came to his own, and his own received him not. Listen to this in Mark chapter 15. Listen to how it goes. And Pilate answered and said again unto them, What will ye then that I do unto him whom ye call king of the Jews? And they cried out, Crucify him. Here's the people that he had come to, that he had healed. He had given them their ability to walk, to hear, to see, to, to cleanse the lepers, uh, to raise the dead. He had fed them when they were hungry. He had done all this, and now this group of people is actually crying out, Crucify him. 
he did only good, and yet he ended up being rejected and hated. The earliest opponents of Christians were the Jews, uh, the ones that had been God's chosen people. They viewed this as a, a new religion that was subversive to their own. And by the way, those Zionist Jews, they, they still do believe that. One person said this, they hated a doctrine which by laying stress upon the personal and spiritual elements in religion imperiled their own ruler's authority and the whole system of form and ceremony with, with which they were associated. Here these Jews had been living in this structure of, okay, well, uh, we do this on the Sabbath and, and on these feast days we do this and here's how we dress and, and, and here's the songs we sing, here's the food we do eat and don't eat and here's the kind of clothing we can wear and, and not wear and not wear together and, and uh, here's all these things and we've got this system and Jesus came and when he did, they said, well, hold on, you're undercutting everything we've been living when actually he had come to fulfill that whole law. And now they hate him. The Bible, or Jesus went on to tell us, look, that if we are disciples of Christ, followers of Christ, obeyers of his command, that same world is going to hate us too, folks. Now, I'll be honest, I don't want the world to hate me. I don't want to be hated. Uh, there are people that hate me. I don't know why I'm so adorable. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't like to be hated. I don't even like to be disliked. I don't even like to be interrupted. I don't like people to hurt my feelings, okay? But the Bible said, Jesus said himself, look, if they've hated me, they're going to hate you. <clears throat> the Roman Empire or, or, or the world will also hate uh, uh, the fault. Where am I? Okay, okay, here we go. The, the world is going to hate the followers of Christ. That After the Jews had began first persecuting, then the Roman Empire joined in and brought down some extreme persecution against the early Christians. Even now in many parts of the world, they, uh, uh, there are Christians being persecuted not because they robbed banks, not because they're trying to overthrow a government, not because they're, they're rapists and murderers, but just for this they're being persecuted because they're followers of Christ. Now, even in our own country, it seems that Christians are more and more the target of the hatred of this world. In verse 19, look there in verse number 19, uh, what Jesus said, If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Now, the Bible tells us, Jesus tells us, the world loves his own, but if I'm a child of God, I'm not of this world anymore. I'm different. We've been chosen out of this world. We, we've become children of God. We are, we are of the light. We are supposed to be walking in the light, and that creates this stark contrast between us and the world. In verse number 20, Jesus tells us this, Remember the word that I said unto you, The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. And so Jesus says, Look, <coughs> you are no better than I am. He said, we, we are no better than the one we follow. And if the world persecuted him, why would we think that it, would, that it would be different for any of us that are following him. The reason it's been different for Christians in America for so long is because this has been historically a Christian nation. A Christian nation whose laws were, the basis of our laws were found within the word of God. Our own founding fathers uh, uh, make statements saying that so, that, that our whole system was founded upon this book that is now being tossed out the door, that is now being shredded and, and, and disregarded and neglected. So we've drifted away. I, uh, uh, anybody ever in here ever listened to Ravi Zacharias? He's a Christian apologist, a, boy, a really smart guy. And he said there's three types of society. There's a the, theonomous society, that, which is a society that obeys the, the laws of God's Word and where God's Word is so much a part of them that 
living it is just natural and we and that we for years in our society we talked about natural law i've heard brother Wright speak of natural law where it's natural to not hurt people and it's natural law that you obey and respect your parents and it's natural law that you don't lie and it's natural law that you don't steal and he said our society is no longer that way our society no longer believes in natural law and a, a, a law by God's word and because of that now listen we are different than the world. I'm not saying we're better. We're different by virtue of the fact that we follow Jesus Christ. And to the best of our ability, we're, we're walking in the light. In verse number 21, look what he says. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. Why will the disciple be hated by the world? For Christ's sake. Because the world does not know the Father. It's, it's been the case throughout history. Even in the Old Testament, you see many of the prophets that were sent were often persecuted and killed by the people they were sent to. Why? Because they were different. They were representing a holy God to an unholy people. In verse number 22, let's look at here. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their sin. I want to tell you one of the reasons the world hates the gospel. It's because the gospel exposes us for who we are. You see, when Jesus first came, these Jews, they, they were saying, well, look, we're doing good. We're doing good because we're keeping these feast days, we're keeping these holy days, and, and we're keeping all these laws, 600 and however many uh, laws in the Old Testament. We're keeping these, and, and we're even adding traditions to them to keep ourselves safe. We are doing good. And Jesus come along, came along and he said, You hypocrites, you snakes, you whited sepulchers. You, with your lips you're close to God, but in your heart you deny him. And all of a sudden now the gospel, he's saying, I came to fulfill the law. You can't fulfill it. And all of a sudden they're realizing, whoa, hold on a minute. We thought we're righteous. We're just sinners. The, the gospel will expose us for who we really are. The gospel makes us accountable to a holy God. The gospel shows me that I can't do it on my own, but that I'm dependent upon God and it runs against our human pride doesn't it and every other religion uh, oh, I forget what old preacher it was he was in a debate and he said listen there, there's only two religions in the world I said well no you're, you're, you, there's more there's many more religions he said no there's only two this person began to name religions and he said no there's only two there's there's works in grace he said Christianity we believe in salvation it's by the grace of God every other religion can fall under they've got to work their way there and we man has always said well there's got to be something that I can do so that I can achieve this and the gospel says no you can't it's all dependent upon God the gospel drove the Pharisees to sometimes act like madmen they sought the stoning. They would rip their clothes. They roused the, the masses against him. With Stephen, the Bible says they even gnashed on him with their teeth. They demanded the crucifixion of Jesus when even the Roman ruler said he couldn't find anything wrong with him. John 15, 25, remember what he said? But this cometh to pass that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause so may it be with the followers of Christ so how do we react to this kind of opposition that we are currently facing and listen folks I, like I've said before I'm not a prophet and I don't like to think doom and gloom but I've got a head on my shoulders and there's something in between those ears even though it doesn't show up very often it's not looking good not looking like peace and, and all like it used to be for the Christians that we're going to face opposition so how do we then knowing that the world's going to hate us how do we face that opposition number one 
Remember what Jesus said? They hated me without a cause. They're going to hate us, but let's not give them a cause. All right, listen to 2 Corinthians 6, 3 through 4. Giving no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed, but in all things approving ourselves as the ministers of God in much patience and afflictions and necessities and distresses. Because we follow Christ, we are going to be blamed. We're going to be blamed because of the ministry, but may the ministry never be blamed because of us. You follow what I'm saying there? Dr. Howes used to say it this way, it's okay, I don't mind if a person's upset with me because of my position, but oh, may they never be upset with me because of my disposition. So as a Christian facing opposition, I've got to remember, look, it is not about me. There will be times in opposition. Look, when somebody opposes you, does that make you angry ever? It, do, it does me sometimes when somebody opposes me. It rubs my fur the wrong way, doesn't it? But look, it's not about me. It's about something bigger. It's about Jesus Christ. And so as we face opposition, as his followers, we've got to remember, look, he was hated, and because he was hated, we're going to be hated for the same reason. Let's not give the world other reasons to hate us. Being rude to the world. And I'm talking, look, going into a restaurant, leaving a track, but not leaving a tip. Don't do that. If you're going to leave a track but not a tip, make sure it's from another church, all right? Don't leave one from this church if you're not going to leave a tip. Don't, don't get there and, and complain and bellyache about the whole entire meal and, and just have that poor waitress about in tears and then leave a gospel track and say, hey, if you're ever out in our way, come visit our church. Okay, now what are we... There we've given reason to be hated, all right? Let's not give reason. Here's the second thing. As a follower of Christ, as a disciple, knowing that the world's going to hate me, if I declare the truth, I still must declare the truth. Acts 7, 54, when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. They gnashed on him with their teeth. Philip here had just uh, 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 given them a history of God dealing with the Jewish people and how they would turn from him, and he kept dealing with him. And finally he said, look, you crucified the Son of God. Oh, man, it cut them to the heart. Listen to what Hebrews 4.12 says about the Word of God, the Gospel. For the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Even when we know the truth is not popular, we are bound by Christ, our faithfulness to Christ, and we are bound by our love for those people to still tell them the truth. You know, those, everybody chooses what they get to do. But you don't get to choose the circumstances. Did you realize that? And the circumstances caused by a deviant lifestyle, the circumstances caused by sin, they can choose to sin. They can't choose those circumstances that follow. The, those things are going to happen. And if I love that person, I'm obligated by the Word of God to tell them the truth of the Word of God. I think it's Philippians where it says it this way, speaking the truth in love. But I've still got to speak the truth. In Matthew 5, 11, or no, 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 uh, 2 Timothy <coughs> Oh, no, here, here's the next one. 2 Timothy 2, 3. We've got to remain faithful. Paul said this to Timothy in 2 Timothy 2, 3. Thou, therefore, endure hardness as a good soldier of Christ. So he said, look, things are going to get tough, Timothy. What do you want me to do, Paul? Well, don't give them a cause to hate you. They're going to hate you just because of the truth. And, and I want you to declare the truth and then endure the hardness. Be faithful, Timothy. Paul said this in 2 Timothy 4.2, preach, uh, preach the word, be instant in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all longsuffering and doctrine. That in season and out of season, if you go out there right now in that field and you look, there, there's corn growing. You know why it's growing? It's in season. 
I could take a handful of corn and go out there in the winter and plant it. It's not going to grow yet, is it? Because it's not in season. And he's saying here, Timothy, listen, there's going to be sometimes you preach and, and nothing, it's going to seem like nothing's happening. It's going to be falling on deaf ears. And there's going to be sometimes you preach, and man, it's going to be in season. The people's hearts will be right. Whatever it is, the, the, uh, uh, the combination of things, and it's going to grow, and it's going to take root, and you're going to bear fruit that's in season. But whether it's in season or out of season, just be faithful to be in your place and preach it. Listen, church, let's determine we're going to be faithful even when there's opposition. We're also to rejoice. In, in Acts chapter 5, verse 31, and they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer for his name. Matthew 5, 11, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you. Blessed, blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and she'll say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. He said, hey, that is great. That doesn't seem great to me. He said, it's great because you're following me. It shows you're my disciple. In Romans chapter 12, verse 14, bless them which persecute you. What? Sort of like Jesus saying, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. It's easy to develop an attitude that seeks revenge. Well, they said this about me. I'll, I'll say something about them. What that, that person over there, they just spit on me. Well, I'm going to go lay them out. They just they threw a punch at me. I'm going to throw two at them. But we've got to remember, look, it's not about me. It's not about you. It's about him. And our, our society is headed downhill fast, isn't it? Look, one of our former presidents, Jimmy Carter, he just said in an interview recently um, that he thinks Jesus would be okay with homosexual marriage. He said, I have no scripture for it, but it just seems like if two people sincerely loved each other and weren't hurting anybody, he'd be fine with that. Did you know that there is a growing trend of parents encouraging transgenderism in their children? That's a growing trend. I read today where this this uh, this boy was sitting. He is, he is all sad, and and his name is Jack. And his parents have started calling him Jackie. And and uh, because he said, uh, he said, why are you sad? Do you not want to go to school? He said, that's not why it is. I'm sad because I'm a boy. Four year four year old. So you know what they did? They went out and bought him dresses and hair bows. What? You gotta be kidding. But listen, that is a great... And they said, we've never seen him so happy. How many of you have ever sinned in the past and were happy while you were doing it? Being happy doesn't make something right, does it? <clears throat> in 2 Corinthians 4, 9, Paul said this, persecuted, he's describing himself, he said he's persecuted, but not cast down. For, or, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed. Our Lord told us, folks, listen, that he would be with us unto the end of the world, didn't he? And just as some of our forefathers, they, they saw that persecution coming, and, and, and they said, or they, they were in the middle of it, and they said, wow, this is incredible. We had the privilege of suffering shame for our Lord. Now, I hope, I hope, and I'm praying, my prayer, I don't think, I'm not, you know, playing taps here, fellas. I, 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 my prayer is, God, give us godly leaders. We need godly leaders. And I'm praying about every day, God, give us godly leaders. Multiple times through the day, God, please give us godly leaders, not just good leaders, but, but that would be a, a welcome change, but godly leaders. But if that doesn't happen, folks, we've got to ask ourselves, okay, are we really going to be his disciples? Throughout history, persecution has been used to bring a drifting people back to God. 
So here's some things in conclusion. Then we have business meeting here in a minute. As we see these things coming down the pipe here, number one, we've got to continue to take the, the gospel to the lost. We've got to continue to declare the truth. Number two, we've got to realize that the world is set against Christ and that no matter what we do, there will be opposition. We can't fall into this trap, folks. Well, what part of God's Word can we compromise to keep them from being angry with us? There's no part you can compromise. And by the way, if you compromise it, they would still be angry with you if you truly love Jesus Christ. That there's no satisfying sin. All right? Error leads to error, right? So we've got to realize the world is set against us, and no matter what we do, there's going to be opposition, and we've got to be faithful to Him. Remember, I already said this verse, Ephesians 4.15, says that we must speak the truth in love as His disciples. Paul said it this way. He said, I finished my course. He said, I've run my race. He didn't give up. And son, you go through the list of things he went through. He was beaten with rods. He was stoned and left for dead. He was thrown in prison. He was beaten with whips. He was shipwrecked a couple times, a night and a day in the ocean. And every time he just kept being faithful and declaring the truth of God's word in love. Folks, I want to encourage you. Let's be faithful and in love declare the truth of God's Word and not let ourselves get in the way to where we give people a reason to hate the gospel. If they're going to hate it, let it be on the gospels only. Let's pray and we'll have a business meeting. Father, we need you, Lord. And Lord, I, I don't in, mean to harp on things that are going on in our country, but I, they are important because it's going to affect the way every one of us live. Father, we're going to be faced with some huge decisions. Would you help us to be faithful? Would you use us to continue to spread the, go the, the gospel to the lost? God, help us to live up to this challenge. As, as heads are bowed and eyes are closed, piano play, if you want.